I want to talk about a little bit of research to sort of set the stage. One of the companies that we have a uh, relationship with is the Institute for Corporate Productivity. They are the largest global network that focuses on human capital issues, but they do it from the perspective of, of identifying those issues and correlating them to business performance. One of the things that's interesting in the way they do their research is not only do they correlate it with business performance, but they correlate it with high performing companies versus low performing companies. And they also correlate it by size of companies. So the research really gives you some interesting insights of what high performing companies are thinking about versus low. And I'll tell you, when you look through their research, the, the contrast is quite amazing. The study I'm gonna talk about today is the critical human capital issues of 2011. This report is pretty fresh. This data was collected in December of 2010. It was collected across North America. There are both Canadian respondent companies as well as U.S. respondent companies in it. The data was tabulated and the report was published in March. What's interesting about it is this thing called critical issues. A critical issue for, the, for I4CP isn't just it's an important problem that my organization needs to solve. That's piece one. Piece two is how effective are you in your organization at solving that problem. And it's taking those two ratings together and the larger the gap between how important the issue is and how effective the company is, the higher it is as a critical issue. So something that's a huge issue but we're not effective at it goes to the top of the list. So where did employee engagement rank in the top 10 for this year? It ranked number nine in the study overall. More importantly though, it was the number six issue for all high performing companies. And then drilling it down another level, it was the number three issue for companies of 999 employees or less. So I think it's safe to say employee engagement is a critical issue here and now. In getting ready for this National Thought Leader series, I spent um, a fair bit of time going back through research studies over the past 10 years. And what I found really interesting was the self-reported levels of employee engagement over the last 10 years. And what was really interesting for me is that it's been very consistent. Between 29% to 33% of employees report being highly engaged in their work over the last decade. Now what bothers me about that is as a business leader, if I was looking at the same metric like that for 10 years, I'd want to do something about it. I wouldn't be very happy about seeing a static score like that for over a decade. So my overall question from myself to other business leaders is simply, why is that okay? And it's been interesting in other cities where companies have been doing their engagement surveys, individual company ratings that we were talking to weren't far off that mark. One of the issues that's come up though is this issue about engaging the C-suite. So how do, we, how do I engage my chief executive officer, my CFO? How do I engage my EVP, that executive team? How do I get them on side? One of the things that we've done with some of our clients is very straightforward. Talk to business leaders in the terms they understand, the business metrics. What the research shows is that organizations with highly engaged workforces have plus 19% higher incomes. They have plus 3.75% higher operating margins. And the other thing that's been interesting is that they've had four times the earnings per share growth rate of the same size company in the same industry, four times. So having a highly engaged workforce will connect to true higher performing metrics for companies.